Today is the 28th of January and I've been back from India for two weeks and I'm gradually getting back to the grind, back to the routine and I'm raring to go. And because the sun is shining, although it's a bit chilly, I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt over my thick fleece and jumpers. So let's go and see what we have because I want to do some actual bonsai projects, simple ones which you can follow and try yourself rather than go into complicated stuff. I know there's um, time and space for everything, but let's get back to basics as it were. Things which you can do. And while walking around the nursery, there are things that I have spotted and I will just pick them up at random and see what we can do. Okay, so look at our stock. This is all the hinokis, pines and various things. But I came across a tree that has been rather overlooked or neglected. So let's do that. Now this, believe it or not, is a spruce of some kind. And look at the root coming right out of the pot. So it's been growing on the nursery for at least 30 years. And I know I can do something with it. So let's see what we can do with this one. Okay. And then there's also another simple one that I can find for you. Oh, well, hey, look, what about this? All these sort of little gems are lying around the nursery. This is a San Jose cutting that I made, I would say, 10 years ago. So it's time I did something like that. So this is the sort of thing that you can pick up from garden centers quite easy. And it's really knowing what to do with them that is at the heart of bonsai. And for good measure, we also have quite a few ewes. Look at these, these are all ewes. And I just spotted a very interesting one here. Look at that, that's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah. So we've got three projects here, so we're going to do all three of them. Okay. So here are the three items that I picked up. So I don't know whether they will all fit in one video. I may do them as one video. Ordinary trees that have been growing on the nursery. Uh, so this one, as I say, must be at least 30 years old, maybe more. Look at the way the root has come out. So let's begin by doing this and then we'll deal with the other ones in time. So we've got to get it out of the pot first. So we will use the lopper. This is a very useful tool, very, very useful tool. When I was out in India, people didn't have the proper tools and they were struggling. So it's very useful to have good basic tools. A lopper is such a good basic tool that if you don't have a thing like this, you really would struggle. I know you can use an axe or whatever, but why do that when you can use something like this? Or if the roots are not that thick, you can use the ordinary secateurs. I always try to save my pots. I never waste pots. So I'm going to use a chisel to cut this off. So no point filming that. So we're using a root cutter to nibble away a little at a time. So this is another very useful tool. So I don't do special videos just on the use of tools, but as I go along, I always explain how various tools are used. So you can see how useful this root cutter is. Huh? It nibbles away and hopefully you should be able to get that entire thing out of the pot. So the object again is to save that pot. Anyone else will just cut the pot and throw it away and pollute the environment with more plastic. I don't like doing that. People laugh at me. Even my staff laugh at me. They don't realize how important it, it is to be both frugal and also to be environmentally conscious. Okay, so you see how clean we've got it and now with one tap we should be able to get it out of the pot.
cut all the roots off and with the wood if you tap it gently with the wood so it spreads the load just very gently there you are that comes out and you can see how pot bound it is and we're going to be very careful how we tease the roots after we've done the tree so let's work on the tree now so looking at this tree i will first of all explore the different angles that this tree can be stood at you can see that there's a line what i always look for when i get raw material is i look for the potential line of the tree unless you're making a dead formal upright um, you should always introduce an interesting line so this would be an interesting line like that that is not so interesting so let us aim to work with the tree with this sort of angle in mind and then see what comes out of it yeah so that's a potential solution to the tree so all we have to do is put some wires on this and that i don't think we need these long branches so basic triangular shape i'm just going to cut off some of these very long bits I'm not sure if I want that bit either. That is enough. I'm not sure about that, but I won't cut it off just yet. So let's proceed to do a bit of wiring. And we're going to wire it like that. Okay. This is a spruce of some kind. For those of you who don't know your trees, Everyone calls these fir trees for want of knowing what the botanical species is. Anything which is evergreen, they call it a fir. They would call this a fir, they would call this a fir. But how to tell the difference is that spruces have foliage like this. I don't know the exact type of spruce, but this is certainly a spruce. Okay, so we're going to wire this and that. Two branch principle every time. Always aim to use the right grade of wire, then you won't have to waste too much time doing it again. Sometimes you can use two coils of the same wire, same gauge. This is, I think, three and a half, possibly four millimeter. So two branch principle literally means I'm wiring these two branches together. Make sure I have enough to go to that end, to that end, and then this enough to go to the top. I always prefer to cut the wire to the requisite length rather than to dangle a whole coil. Sometimes I do do that, but it's better not to dangle a coil. So it's better to have the exact length you require. Okay, I've now anchored that one. And we will now proceed to do this. By the way, I'm going to make a special announcement on another YouTube video because for those of you who live in Holland or in Belgium, I'm going to visit Lodder's Nursery on the 11th of March to do a demonstration. And because I know many of you like to meet me, if you can be there, 11th of March, I'm going to be in Europe demonstrating and meeting people so you are very welcome to come and meet me there and I look forward to seeing you so we are taking three of our staff to Lotus so we will have a great time there right to the end Again, the gin pliers, another very useful tool. And once we've got it, we will now try and give it a bend. When you bend the branches, always grip it with your palms like that, because should it break, you can feel it breaking. So it prevents it snapping, so you can always feel it. So this gives you better control. Put it back on the turntable, you can get a better view. Now, 
You've got to ask yourself, do I need that one? I will keep a little bit of that. I try not to take everything off in case I regret doing it. Now this one is really a problem branch. Anyone would remove this straight away because it's from the inside of the elbow. It is a no-no. And but I may keep it in case I need a back branch. So I'm going to bit of, do a bit of cheating. So very often you can break the rules because you really have to. And I'll explain to you why when I've done it. I'm going to break the rule by using this branch. So I'm going to wire this branch and that branch together so that I still apply the two branch principle. The two branch principle, I can't emphasize enough how important that is. Two branch principle is really what we call non-negotiable. If you follow the two branch principle, you're bound to succeed and produce good wiring and have neat wiring. If you go to exhibitions, if they do use wire on the trees, sometimes it is permitted, you will see examples of very good wiring. So when you're doing a double coil, always make sure that they are tight to each other, literally what we call hugging each other or kissing each other. So don't let it be wide apart. So, These poor plants are just left to fend for themselves on the nursery. I don't think they're even fed. But they survive somehow. And of course, being left in this small pot has already done part of the work. It slowed the growth down, stunted the tree, so most of the bonsai work has been done. Okay, now we will deal with some of these very long shoots because if it's going to be a pad, it needs to be like a arrowhead fashion. So we cut the arrowhead shape. So you see what I mean? These long shoots can be cut back so that they come to a point. Wide at the base, terminating in a point. Now you must be wondering, does it harm the tree by doing this? No, it doesn't because by doing this, you are encouraging more ramification or more density in future buds and twigs. So don't worry about that. Now even this one which has been wired, I'll make it roughly a herringbone shape, wide at the base, narrowing to the tip. Okay, now i just noticed something else. You may have also noticed it. Look at the shape of the tree from this side. I didn't even consider using this as a front. I started off by looking at this as a front. So you should always keep an open mind. So just by chance, I discovered that this is a very nice shape. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So. <laughs> This is what I mean. If you keep an open mind, you will always come across interesting solutions. Now, I've got to ask myself, do I need this? I probably don't need this. And I don't want to just do a gin for the sake of doing a gin. So let me come back. Yeah. See how nice that is now? That's good. How nice that is. And this will become a nice taper. I can then pare this down. And I will just do some rough wiring to make the pads more presentable.
every little exercise, not only am I passing on my knowledge, but even I learn new things. And this has reinforced what I often talk about, keeping an open mind. And this was a clear case of keeping an open mind. Now this tree looks nice from this side even. The more you look at it, it looks nice from this side. <laughs> it looks nice from this side, which was the original front. And it also looks nice from this side. So whichever side you look at it, look at it. This is a very nice front now. This I would say is a very nice front. How interesting is that? Lovely. See? And then these we are going to just support and make more detailed wiring. I shouldn't waste too much time doing one of the details. As I always remind people, most of my videos are to show you principles rather than detail. Uh, okay, let me just do this one. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera off for a while because this is going to be just very tedious wiring that I'm going to do. So I'm going to just wire this and this. And I'm going to wire some of the thinner branches. When I've wired it, I will show you what it is. The main uh, part of the exercise of design has already been done by choosing possible fronts. So we've come to the conclusion that this is a possible front of the tree. So we're going to wire these, support these, and then we will show it to you again. The wiring in progress. Look at the beautiful pad, pad formation. Perfect herringbone shape. So the principle is to just wire everything in sight and then see what happens. So this is what we've done, precisely what we've done. And as I said, we started out with the other side as the front. Now we are looking at this as the front. So we changed our concept completely. But as long as it works and you're prepared to change your mind. So let me remind you, what did we start off first? I think we started off with this as the first option. So we started off with this and then when I turned the tree around I found that there were so many other options. Even this is a nice front so I'm more or less going to choose this as the front. But as I always say because we are a commercial nursery anyone who comes to the nursery may eventually buy this tree and they would decide to use something else as the front. So can you see just by wiring all the branches, we've got quite a dense top to it. So let me just do a little bit of pruning with my scissors. So remember by pruning you get more density. As spring comes you will get more growth. Sorry, it's wiring that. So I would leave it like that. That's quite creditable, yeah. isn't it? And then, how are we going to repot this? You see the roots are, if you home in on it, you see how tight it is. Solid. Now, because it's so tight, I'm going to have a go at teasing some of the roots out. I don't think it would be that difficult. So we will just tease it gently. This is certainly a case of the tree being pot pot. I don't know what compost. This is probably the old peat soil that I used to go use 30 years ago. Because I bet you anything, this tree has been on the nursery for 30 years or more. And it's going to be put in a training pot. So I'm not going to show you the process of teasing the roots out. That is 
going to be the subject of another video about wheel potting. This, the object of this exercise is to show you how we made this tree. So look at it from this side. This is how we would view the tree. So this is the final outcome of this tree. So I hope you like this and we'll move on to another project. Okay, so this one is done. Let's go on to something else. Now this is another little plot that we found. A San Jose cutting that I made about 10 years ago. I just leave these things lying around the nursery. They fend for themselves. If they survive, they survive. And because they are not hurried along, if I were to grow this in an intensive matter, put it in a field, it would have got that thick in 10 years. But because it's been a pot all its life, it hasn't thickened that much. So we don't always rush to put everything in the ground. So there's a time and place for everything. We do different things to suit different uh, objectives. So this one, again, when I get a piece of material like this, what do I do? I always look at the potential line of the tree to see how I can get an interesting line. So tilt it in all sorts of directions and see what comes of it. Now, this is a rather difficult tree to bend because it is almost like an iron bar. It's so stiff. So not all junipers are that flexible. San Jose is a very, very stiff juniper. So if I were to bend it, I would have to use a branch splitter to split it. I will use a branch splitter just to see what happens. Even if I did not bend it with the branch splitter eventually, I can at least uh, make it to produce some gnarled looking effects. So this is how I would use the branch splitter. You just literally put the blades in till the two blades meet and that split the trunk. And it becomes slightly more bendable. So if I were to try and bend it, I might be able to get some shape. I always talk about using thin branches. These are the branches that are potentially usable. But this tree again is not that exciting as it stands. So what can we do? Let me see if I can introduce a very subtle bend to the tree. Let me use some of my second hand wire. So easy to keep throwing wire away so where I can I try and use the old scraps of wire this is a really thick piece of wire here and I'm putting it around the main trunk I don't need to go all the way up I could have taken it all the way up but I don't need to so let me terminate the end of the wire with the gin pliers such a thick piece of wire would be impossible to bend with your fingers so the gin plier comes into its own. And now these two are of a different thickness so I can put another piece of wire on here to try and give it a bend. Okay, so these two are fairly similar in thickness, so I will wire these two branches. So choosing the right grade of wire for the job in hand is a critical part of the bonsai creation process.
We are now into almost very early spring. It's the 28th of January today. And before you know it, it'll be February. And February is going to be our most, uh, I think, busy month for repotting. In the UK, in Southern England, this is when I do most of my repotting. Even leaving it to March is possible, but it can get a bit late if you suddenly get a warm spell. So we are going to be very busy next month. Okay, so I put these two pieces of wire. Now let's see if I can bend it without cracking it. I think I did tell the story once going back to 1980. I did a program on the BBC and I managed to break one of these San Jose junipers. And of course, when you break it and snap it, you have to carry on as if you meant it. It was deliberate. It wasn't <laughs> deliberate, but it was accidental. But you got to go ahead and say that, oh, I meant to do that. <laughs> it was what a bit was of it? cheating, but this is what television is about. It's so artificial. <laughs> but it, what I'm trying to say is that, oh, there you are. I broke that one. <laughs> So they are notorious for breaking, so I'll show you. I don't try to hide anything. So this has split. I was tempting fate. I know the species. San Jose juniper is a very brittle juniper. You look, see what's happened here. I could repair it. Now sometimes if it happens like that, what do you do? You could tie it together and repair it. It will heal because it hasn't been separated. So. You could do that. I might well do that just as an exercise, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And see what happens. Because it hasn't separated. So I'll keep it on. I just won't bend it that far. So do be warned that some of these junipers can split like this. But as long as it hasn't been torn away completely from the trunk, you could salvage it and save it. So again, I'm trying to create some sort of shape to the tree. And we'll see what happens. Let's see what comes out of it. Every little thing I do is geared towards creating an interesting line. By creating an interesting line, the whole bonsai will become more interesting to look at. So what was a very straight tongue, I've now managed to do a little bend here. You can see it has bent. So now let's wire some of these branches together and we see what happens. Okay, so there's more wiring to do. I'm going to wire all these together. I may not show you the precise process of wiring because always feel that many of these basic things are not worth showing. It's more important to show the essential parts of the process rather than tedious wiring. All it needs is wiring branches in pairs, two branch principle. be more branches than I need but I will still keep everything until I'm absolutely sure I don't need it and then I will eliminate them. Wire some more at the top but I think that I think is sufficient. So if we can show the before picture. So that is something out of nothing. Again, bending the trunk to create an interesting trunk line. And then we've got another tree. Now let's move on to the third project. 
I hope all this will be in one video. So this is a English U. The interesting thing about this tree is that the base here is quite nice. It's at least two inches across over there. And what I'm looking for, now this trunk would be almost impossible to bend. That is very straight, so I don't think I need all that at the top. So probably to save confusing you, let's get rid of all that. I always say you begin by making a rough conical shape and it will give you some encouragement because the tree will then begin to look something like a bonsai. Now, keep an open mind, so don't just think that this has to be the front. It could turn out to be the back, depending on where we can find a nice leading shoot. Let's put it up like here, so we can put it up this way and see. That's a very strong shoot. If you wanted to make a really short tree, you can make that the leader. So again, I'm looking for thin branches to use, really thin branches to use. So I keep turning the tree around, reduce all this unwanted stuff. So this was a two foot high tree it's already down to about 12 inches, so that's good for a start. That's still very interesting. It's between this side. Even this side could possibly be interesting. With this as a possible leader, I'm always looking for a leading shoot. Well, that can be a leading shoot. So it's a process of analyzing the tree. This is open, but I don't think this is necessarily nice. You see, this is an ugly feature. This, I would say, is not nice. So this is possible. This is possible. And that is the top. I don't want to be too radical just for the sake of being radical. So I'm still looking for a leader, leader to take up to the top. Even this could be taken up to the top as a leader. This could be a leader, so many possible leaders. So I'm still looking for thin branches to use. This is where a lot of decisions have to be made. possibilities there are. Let's move that upward pointing branch. This is dead. The more I look at it, I'm more attracted to this side. I'm trying to avoid using that because that's yeah. a thick branch. Yeah. So yeah, right. flattening it, but I'm not going to use that possibly. So I'm still looking at the tree, analyzing. This is the difficult part. For those of you who are starting to make bonsai from ordinary nursery material, choosing the front and taking major decisions is the key to successful bonsai creation. Once you can get the right solution, then everything falls into place. I was looking at this initially, but 
it is not exactly interesting although that might seem attractive this is a bit ugly to me so this is more attractive it gives more scale to the tree to do the bag trick again it may seem a bit radical but what was going through my mind was doing something really really radical and keeping the tree only that tall yeah. like that so that's going to be really radical really radical so that's a possibility or if I didn't want to make it that small I can do this use the tree this size take that up as the leader so that's a possibility so you can see there are so many possibilities to this tree so it's really a confusing choice that we have conflicting a lot of conflicting branches but just to leave it like a ball is not the answer is not the answer certainly not the answer I rem I'm reminded back in the 1970s in the British bonsai scene people used to just grow trees like this and put them in little pate dishes and call them bonsai it looks quite interesting but it's not really what I would term as a satisfactory tree. These branches are a bit thick. I may have to make new branches grow from there. This is a difficult branch to use. This one here coming up. So what I might do is I might just start ginning it because this we don't need. This upward growing one we don't need. I'm going to gin on this. This will be ginned. All this is going to be ginned. Okay, let's bite the bullet. <laughs> I was looking at Wikipedia about the origins of bite the bullet and apparently it had origins in India because the British commanders used to make the native soldiers, sepoys, who were either Muslims or Hindus, bite the cartridge before they put it into the barrel of the gun and the bullets were greased with either cow fat or pig fat. So if you were Muslim you wouldn't bite the bullet which had pig fat. And if you were a, a Hindu, you wouldn't bite the bullet with cow fat. So bite the bullet was a very radical decision that one had to make. And so I was quite interested in reading that. You might like to read it. So when you hear me use the expression bite the bullet, it might be interesting to research the origins of that expression. So all that is going to be gin now. I've bitten the bullet. <laughs> I've decided to take this up as the leader. So all this is going to be ginned. Yeah. From there, and I'm just going to wire this. Okay, so we will now proceed to gin it and we'll show you the end product after ginning. Right, I'll show you what we've done so far. I've got Josh to gin the entire top of the tree and we've kept the tree low. So we reduced the height by, I would say, 60%. We've taken 60% off. Yeah, that was how tall the tree was. Notified you. We've taken it down to here. So I'm just doing some rough wiring to see what shape I can get. Remember that this is only the structure, it's not meant to be the finished article. Yews are quite difficult trees to maintain because 
they don't like their roots tinkered with and they don't like it frosted to use. It's just hit and miss. I have a rough idea though. Okay, again make sure it goes to the top. Always conscious of the two branch principle. Once you do it without thinking then you've probably mastered the art. I find that in the winter, the frost and the cold can transmit through the wire onto the stems and that can cause some distress to the tree. I remember back about 40, 50 years ago when I first started doing bonsai, I used to have the problem with larches in the winter. The larches, if they're wired and you leave the wire on, they don't seem to survive the winter so well if the wire is left on the trunks or the branches. They always have a habit of dying back. You see, so even with thin branches, you can see the effect I can get with this tree. I don't think I need too many branches. I've got a lot of branch here. I might just wire that four. Look. So this is as far as I've got with this tree. So I don't think it looks bad, but I'm not going to be tempted to pot it into a bonsai pot. I will put it back in a flower pot and let it grow and then I might consider putting it in a bonsai training pot. I will decide but the roots are quite soft so I might do it. But meanwhile let me show you what I've done with the other two trees. So this is the San Jose Juniper. Look at that. Okay. Looks good. And then let's show you the Picea. No, not Picea. It's just. It's Picea. Picea, yeah. Look yeah. at that. Beautiful. <laughs> there you go. And this was the branch coming from inside the elbow. I'm glad I didn't get rid of it because from inside the elbow, I've taken it to this side. And I can do a little more refining by trimming the ends. By trimming the ends, I get more ramification. And uh, hopefully is a very credible tree. The trouble is when people see these trees, they all want to buy it. But I want to keep it to see how it develops. So there you are, go. three projects in one, three in one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Josh, for doing the filming. <laughs>